Captain Mike's Rigging Station. Powered by Florida Sport Fishing TV. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Captain Mike and welcome to my rigging station. Right here, this is where it all happens. In advance of every episode of Florida Sport Fishing TV, we spend a tremendous amount of time down here getting ready because proper preparation is vital to success offshore, regardless if you're targeting tuna or tilefish. That's the bottom line. And this is it. It's not a stage studio. It's a rigging station. It's a garage. You've got one of these too. Okay, it's a man cave. Call it whatever you want to call it, but this is where it all comes together well in advance of every episode. It's just not that simple to go out there and catch fish after fish. You've got to put in a tremendous amount of time. The topic that we're talking about today, deep drop fishing, one of my favorite fisheries. Really mysterious. You're out there fishing in very deep water, anywhere from 6, 650 on the shallow side to well over a thousand feet on the deep side. Outside of daytime sword fishing, 1,000, 12, 1,400 feet for queen snappers and big misty groupers. Um, but generally, most of the fishing that we do is going to be between that 700 and 1,000 foot range. Now, of course, depending on where you are, that's going to vary. If you're down here in the Florida Keys, we're talking 20 miles offshore is where really we're going to start looking for good bottom. If you're in the Gulf of Mexico, you may have to run 100 miles offshore. However, Southeast Florida, deeper water, much closer. And of course, Bahamas, the deep dropping is world class. No question about that. Everybody deep drops a little bit different, right? Everybody's got their own techniques, their own tackle. I wanna share with you what I do, how I do it, why I do it. Um, and again, take what I'm sharing with you and customize it to where you are and the species you're targeting. Why do I love deep dropping? Very exciting, very, very rewarding, very challenging. The days of fishing big bulky reels out of a rod holder with 10 or 12 pounds of lead and just pushing a button, that's not me. That's not how I deep drop fish. Tackle has come a long, long way. I'm fishing light gear. The Shimano Beastmaster 9000, it weighs almost nothing. Incredibly powerful. Everything from snapper to swordfish I can target with this power assist reel. It's matched to a, to a chaos a 30 to 60 pound outfit, seven foot, bent butt rod, soft tip, I mean, look at that tip, so I can detect the most subtle strike from even a thousand feet away, but plenty of backbone right there so I can haul up big fish and a lot of weight, really important. And you know, before I even go any further, I should mention to you that if the conditions dictate that I can't get away with fishing light lead in that two or three pound range, four pounds at the most, I then step it up. Okay, I've got another set of outfits, the same rods, a little bit shorter, six and a half foot, rated for 50 to 100 pound class. And look, all I gotta do is remove that butt section, obviously remove the reel in the butt section, clip it onto here, and boom. I'm back in the game with a heavier rod. It's literally that simple. So by bringing a couple of extra rods, I'm really equipped for anything that I might find offshore. Because like I said, the way that I deep drop fish, it's as light and as stealthy as possible. I'm fishing 40 pound braid on this Beastmaster. 2,000 yards of line on this reel, more than a mile. I've got plenty of line capacity. Super strong, that 40 pound braid, you can pull an elephant with that thing but sensitive, sensitive. And because it's so thin and so sensitive, I could get away with fishing lighter leads. And that's the key for me. I only like to fish two or three pounds. If I've got to go to four, five, yeah, you know, I'm just not thrilled about it. I want to fish as light as I can. And I want to fish under the arm the entire time. I keep it very sporty, a lot of fun. The rod is in my arm. My fingers are on the line. I'm feeling for every bite, okay? Really, really cool stuff. By the way, the reel has a fast retrieve ratio as well. This Shimano Beastmaster has a 3.1 to one gear ratio. So it's like a international or a big, you know, Tiagra, a lot of a lot of speed there so i can literally fish it manually if i wanted to and then of course i've got that high power motor with the variable speed that obviously that's what deep dropping is about right power cords look 
these things come with like six or seven foot power cords, whatever it is. I extend mine, as you can see, right? They're all coiled nice and neat, but I extend it over 20 feet, so I've got plenty of mobility around the boat. I don't bring one. We fish two different outfits. We fish one outfit up in the bow, and we fish an outfit midship or the stern, so we're always fishing two rods. Make sure you've got a couple of power cords, and make sure you bring a spare, because these things go bad, and there's nothing worse than getting 25 miles off the beach, and suddenly your power cord doesn't work. Hey guys, I'm Captain Mike and welcome to my rigging station. You've asked over and over, here's the answer. Two bro fishing, four different styles of rod and reel holder mounts for every application. Their ingenious lure and leader keeper system is perfect, either permanently mounted or portable. It keeps everything I need right at my fingertips so I could focus on staying hooked up. Listen, I count on Dubro products, so should you. Check out their full line of innovative gear at DubroFishing.com. For over 80 years, Furuno Innovations have helped more fishermen find and catch more fish than any other brand. And we're raising the bar again with Navnet TZ Touch 3's new PBG and Fish It Drift It technologies. Build your own three-dimensional shaded relief charts to find trophy fish others have missed. Perform accurate drifts the first time, every time. Be the one everyone follows. When you're serious about fishing, lead the way and get serious with Furuno. Chaos. Gear matters. Yeah. Oh my god! That right there, baby, is deep dropping. Chaos. Gear matters. Shop online or visit our new superstore for everything fishing. Deep Glow outshines the competition. With a robust housing, durable glass dome, and stainless steel hardware, Deep Glow lights are the toughest, brightest, and easiest to install. Throw them in, plug them in, and let the show begin. I've literally created my own feeding frenzy. Residential or commercial, one or 50 lights, Deep Glow increases property values, creates loyal customers to waterfront businesses, and provides years of trouble-free service. Tell them Captain Mike sent you and receive a free timer. So getting back to it, this is the outfit that we're fishing for almost everything. And we're targeting blue line tile fish, uh, golden tile fish, queen snappers, barrel fish, snowy grouper, yellow edge grouper, a lot of different species out there. And of course, depending on where you are, that may include long tail bass, barrel fish, the list goes on and on. But I can handle almost anything with that outfit and I can do it comfortably, I can do it sensitively, okay, and I can do it with maximum sport. I'm not just fishing out of a rod holder with a really heavy reel. The rig, this is perhaps another area that's so debatable because if you ask a hundred different captains what their best or favorite or choice deep drop rig is, you're gonna get a hundred different answers, okay? In my particular case, I like to fish a three hook rig. I don't need more than that. If I fish a five hook rig, I'm creating a lot of drag. Okay, there's a lot of things in the water right there and it's more drag going down, more drag coming up, more drag and resistance on the bottom, which means I'm gonna have to go from three pounds to four pounds, okay? And so on and so forth. Every little incremental move is gonna require me to fish more lead, less sensitive, just not what I'm looking for. I wanna be as sensitive and as stealthy as possible. So a three hook rig is ideal. I also don't like to fish rigs and hooks with a lot of hoopla on there. Glow beads, skirts, I don't like that at all. I like to keep mine very, very clean, very clean. A lot of guys will fish deep drop rigs and they really believe that avoiding swivels and crimps is gonna keep that rig a little bit stealthier and you're gonna get more bites. Look, that might be the case. I don't believe so. I believe that 800, 1,000 feet below the surface, a fish keys in on my squid or on my fresh bonita, he's not going to hesitate because that is on the hook you know, or on the line away from the bait. He probably doesn't even see it or even know that it's there. So I would rather fish a rig that's very functional 
and that fishes the entire time. It's not twisting, it's not tangling, because every single moment that I'm tangled is one moment that I'm not fishing and catching a fish. And I really found that these little swivel sleeves, which are really easy to work with, you know, Diamond Fishing Products has them in a couple different sizes. They're so simple to make deep drop rigs from. You literally just slide the little swivel sleeve. There it is, right there. You just slide it right on your main trunk line and your branch comes off and you just crimp the side and hold it in position. Like I said, it couldn't be any easier than that. There's the top of the rig that connects to my swivel. There's the swivel sleeve with one of my branches coming off the trunk line. It's all 150 pound diamond monofilament extra hard leader material, all of it. Four feet away, three to four feet away, I have a second branch. And three to four feet below that, I have my bottom branch. It's a three hook rig, very clean. And as you can see, once it's spread out, all three of those baits are gonna be lying on or near the bottom, exactly where I want them, okay? I am not dragging that rig across the bottom. I don't like to deep drop by just locking up the reel, keeping it in a rod holder, and dragging it as the boat drifts. That's how you're gonna get hung up, and it's just not, you're gonna scope up off the bottom. That isn't the right way to do it. I'm fishing under the arm, okay? The rod is under the arm my entire time. I deploy that bait, my thumb is on the spool, I get to the bottom, and I'm slowly spooling it out. I'm in free spool. And look, I'm slowly spooling it out as the boat is drifting away. I don't like to power into the current. I want the boat to drift sideways. We can fish multiple lines right off the side of the boat. And I just slowly spool it out depending on the current and the speed of the current, which I'm not gonna know until I'm there. That's why when I head offshore deep dropping, I'm well prepared for anything that I might find. Look, I might be fishing 700 feet of water with a half a knot of current where I could easily get away with a two pound sash weight, and it's perfect. On the other hand, I might be fishing a thousand feet of water where I might need five pounds of lead in two knots of current. So a lot of different variables. I bring plenty of lead, I'm ready for everything. The rig is the same. The rig is the same, regardless of how much lead or how deep of water or the fish that I'm targeting, I'm using the same rig. It's got a VMC 90 inline tournament circle hook. If the fish isn't big enough to eat that hook, it's not big enough for me to catch. That's the bottom line. I'm a trophy hunter. I'm looking for the bigger fish, the big tile fish, the big groupers. And trust me, they have no problem getting a big hook down their throats. They've got a big mouth. Episode. We talked a lot about tackle, a lot about finding these fish, staying on them. Got them. All right, all right. Nice job. What a fish. Oh, yeah, that's a fat one right there. That's what we want. Oh, nice one. Look at that one. Got it. Nice. That's a tuna. That's what it's all about. Right there. Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about. Just real. Just real. All right, come on, come on. Somebody get in there. Get in there. Crank, 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 crank. Got him. Got him. Got him. We got him. You got it, nice. We got him. Get him in the boat. Ready? Oh. Put it on to your rod. Never jeopardize losing a rod. Ever. Perhaps more important is the bait. Look, 
when you're deep drop fishing, I don't care if it's for vermilion snapper or queen snappers or Nassau, you know, whatever it is that you're fishing with, misty groupers, I, I shouldn't say Nassau groupers, but whatever it is, squid is the staple. Everything eats squid. It's slurpy, slimy, delicious, and everything on the bottom out there feeds and lives on squid. So it's a great bait, but nothing is more important than fresh meat. You need some fresh meat if it's bonita, uh, fresh dolphin, jack, ballyhoo, I don't care what it is, fresh is key. So I always bring a combination of baits on the three hook rigs. I'm generally fishing a nice whole squid, something in the six to 10 inch range on the bottom hook. I'll put a fresh piece of meat, a big strip of bonita, preferably, or something they can't resist on the middle hook, and then perhaps another big squid on the top hook. I'm feeding it out, okay? Like I said, I'm spooling it out. I get a bite, don't lock it up and just start reeling. You'll potentially pull that bait away from the fish, okay? I get a bite and I just spool it out. I let him eat it. Let him suck it down his throat. Let him get that hook out his butt. I just keep feeding it out, feeding it out, feeding it out. I give him a few seconds and then I'll lock it up. You can either lock the reel up manually, okay, by simply pushing that forward or by engaging the handle and that will, you know, lock up the reel and I'll slowly start cranking, okay? And I know that fish will be on there. That VMC 90 circle hook will catch him in the corner of the mouth every time. And at that point, I'm gonna know within seconds how big that fish is. Literally within seconds. He's either gonna wanna come up off the bottom or he's not. And that's where that battle begins. And that's where your drag setting is really important. Again, we're fishing really strong line. The 40 pound diamond braid is incredibly strong. I fish diamond braid across many, many venues, okay? But it can't be damaged. It's gotta be nice and clean and fresh and you still have to have a proper drag setting. I want that fish to be able to pull drag off the reel, either as he's on the bottom, running across the bottom, he's gotta have the ability to pull some drag off the reel. And that's even more important when you're bringing that fish up off the bottom. You've got a big lead on the bottom that's spinning, okay? Which by the way, the bottom of your rig better have a big swivel because look, look at that, look at that, look at that right there. That's how your lead is going to spin going all the way down and all the way back up right there. And if you don't have a big diamond ball bearing snap swivel connected to that lead, your rig will be destroyed. But again, that drag, as that rig is coming up, the fish is spinning around the rig, the boat's rocking up and down, you've gotta have some give, the drag has to be set properly. Let it stop, let the fish stop the drag or pull it out, even though that braid is much stronger than that and you could slam the brakes on it and go full speed, that's how you end up pulling the hook and losing fish. Additionally, that 40 pound diamond braid, because it has no stretch and no give, we attach that 40 pound diamond braid using an Alberto knot to 30 feet of 100 pound diamond monofilament. Okay, so now we've got that clear 30 feet, 100 pound, it's elastic, it acts as a shock absorber when the boat's bouncing up and down, the fish is coming up and down. So it's just a perfect setup. You don't need more than 100, you're fishing 150 on the rig, 100 pound top shot of the leader material, 40 pound braid. It doesn't get any stealthier or sexier than that or more effective. That's the way we deep drop fish. Really, really effective. We're feeling for every bite. It's so sensitive. We're reacting accordingly. Okay, the only reason the rod's even on a bent butt is because there are times we're multitasking when I just need to bring that bait up off the bottom. You can put it in a rod holder or help my co-host unhook a fish. You can leave the rod in a rod holder. Otherwise, you typically can fish a straight butt rod as well. Real important that you're fishing right. You know, like I said, don't overfish with too much lead and too big of a rig. You're just gonna hurt yourself, okay? Additionally, be prepared for everything that you're gonna encounter out there. You don't know what those conditions are gonna be until you get there. Like I said, today it could be half a knot, tomorrow it could be two and a half knots. Plus, be ready for dolphin. You are in dolphin territory. You're way offshore deep dropping in deep water. I'm never gonna go offshore. 
deep dropping without having multiple spinners rigged and ready to go. Nothing super fancy. Chaos Gold, seven foot, 15 to 30 pound spinner, rigged with a Shimano Saragossa 10,000, loaded with 30 pound diamond braid, 30 pound fluorocarbon leader, 70 wide bait hook. When we set up to do our deep drops, we're gonna throw out a couple of flat lines. One up off the bow, one off the stern. Squids, we're drifting, the squids are drifting with us. That's all that I need. I don't need live baits. 50% of the time, you're gonna catch dolphin on those flat lines. Fresh bait is vital in today's highly pressured fisheries, and no one makes it easier to catch live bait than the Bally Hoop. With a complete line of collapsible hoop nets and accessories, the Bally Hoop is a must have for every angler. Simply deploy the Bally Hoop and watch the magic. With the Bally Hoop, catching live bait is clean, fast, and simple. Ask for the Bally Hoop at your local tackle shop or visit us online to find a dealer near you. Dependable terminal tackle is vital in every venue. That's why professional anglers targeting bonefish to blue marlin rely on diamond fishing products. With an extensive selection of the finest monofilament, fluorocarbon, and braided fishing line in the world, it's time you avoid the rest and rig with the best. Diamond fishing products, the official line of Florida Sport Fishing TV, tournament winning fishing teams, and busy charter captains from coast to coast. Vital to success, your boat. We're fishing a 39 CV, Mercury Power 39 CV, equipped with a Furuno TZ Touch network. The electronics are vital. Not only does it help me get dialed into where I'm going, right, with all of the different spots that we're fishing, which range from wide open, flat, muddy plateaus, where the tilefish like to dig burrows and holes for safety, where they sleep in those burrows. So it's gotta be muddy, it's gotta be soft in order to find and fool the blue line tiles and the golden tiles. However, the groupers, the snowies, the yellow edge groupers, they like low-lying rock. They like some exposed rubble, some reef offshore there. Not these giant sharp ledges and mountains, but just low-lying rock. And that fish finder on that TZ Touch, my DFF 3D and my DFF sounder, I literally can see right on the bottom some fuzz, I could see that rock 800, 900 feet down, exposed right off the bottom. And interestingly, whenever I see it, I know it's rock because you'll catch a fish there and quite often they'll have crabs. They'll have spider crabs inside their belly or even spitting them out of their mouth. Those crabs live in the rock and that's where those fish are right there feeding, okay? So proper electronics are vital. Once I get to an area that I wanna fish, regardless if it's that flat, muddy plateau or a hill or any sort of structure, I'm gonna use my Furuno TZ Touch Network. I'm gonna hit the fish it, drift it feature. It'll tell me exactly where I need to position the boat in order to drift the area that I want to. Okay, I'm gonna have my track line on. I'll fish an area, you know, how much time will I give it before I move? Well, that's gonna depend. Every single day is different. How much time is it gonna take me to thoroughly canvas that particular area? If I've caught fish there before, I'm generally gonna do three drifts in the area. If I don't get any bites, and if I don't see anything exciting in three drifts, I'm moving. I'm going to a different depth, a different area altogether. I can't stress how important fresh meat is. I don't care if you catch it on the way out or catch it in advance. Make sure you're properly prepared with the squid and the meat. Bring plenty of leads, not one or two sinkers. Bring a dozen of each. You never know what's gonna happen. You're gonna lose rigs. You're deep dropping. Sharks are gonna destroy your rigs. A lot of different things are gonna happen. So make sure you've got plenty of leads, plenty of rigs. I can tell you in my box, I've got a dozen, a dozen rigs pre-tied, ready to go. I don't wanna be tying rigs out there. I wanna be catching fish out there. So I do them all here in the rigging station in advance. Understand time of the year. Right now, here it is, end of May. Tile fish, open. Snowy grouper, open. Yellow edge grouper, open. Etc. Species are open, so you can go out there and catch them. Be very, you know, pay very close attention to per person limits, boat limits. Understand tile fish are considered grouper within your aggregate. 
um, but you don't want to be out there fishing for these species during closed seasons. That makes no sense whatsoever. So we spend a lot of time deep dropping May, June, July. It's a perfect time of the year, a lot of opportunity, but I'll tell you what, the mystery, going out there trying to find these amazing bottom fish that are, you know, not only beautiful, not only fight hard, but they're mysterious, they taste great on the dinner table, they're trophy, you know, class fish. To be able to go out there and pinpoint where these fish are, 800 feet below the surface. I mean, think about that. You're standing on an 80 or 90 story building, dropping one rod, one, you know, rig to the bottom. Man, I'll tell you what, for me, that challenge is awesome. And, and it really, really is exciting to find those fish, to fool them, to hook them, to fight them, to land them. It all comes together. And it's a great, you know, it's a great tool to have in your overall arsenal. Some days the dolphin, if you're offshore, you're not gonna find the mahis, you're not gonna find the dolphin. So deep dropping is a great alternative to that as well. In closing, be prepared, expect the unexpected, and bring backups for everything, okay? Because once you're out there, if you need it, you're not gonna have it. So it's always a good idea to have an arsenal and have backups for everything. And if you rig right, I promise you, you're gonna get tight. Connect with the crew on Instagram at Florida Sport Fishing TV. Catch our extreme seminar series at www.fsftv.com and get hooked up.